If you haven't done so already, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. We're going to begin this question by letting the velocity of the girl relative to the ice be v sub gi. And because it's a relative velocity, we can let the velocity of the girl relative to the ice equal the velocity of the girl relative to the plank plus the velocity of the plank relative to the ice. Notice that the question actually gives us v sub gp, which again is the velocity of the girl relative to the plank, which is stated right here. The girl begins to walk along the plank at a constant velocity of 1.5 meters per second. So that is indeed the velocity of the girl relative to the plank, which means we can plug in 1.5 for this term right here. Now, this is a result that we will hold on to and refer to shortly. Next, we will use the conservation of momentum. And we're going to do so relative to the ice. Now, initially, the girl and the plank are at rest, so the initial momentum would be zero. But then, as the girl begins to walk across the plank, both she and the plank are moving. So we have the final momenta of the girl and the final momentum of the plank. Notice that for the velocities, we've included the i to remind ourselves that the velocity of each object is relative to the ice. What we'll do next is solve this equation for v sub pi, and to do that we will subtract this term over to the left side. We'll then divide both sides of the equation by m sub p. Now this expression for the velocity of the plank relative to the ice can be substituted into the equation we developed earlier. The plus and the minus sign here can just become a minus. And then we can maybe drop the brackets for some clarity. Now let's take stock of where we are here. Remember part A of the question is asking for the girl's velocity relative to the surface of the ice. So we are actually trying to solve for VGI. It appears on both sides of the equation. So we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra to solve for it. Perhaps what we can do is add this fraction over to the left side of the equation. And now that we have the VGI terms on both sides of the equation, we can factor it out. So we're going to factor out a VGI. Might want to pause here and just make sure that makes sense. If we sort of redistributed the VGI, we would see that VGI times this 1 is indeed VGI. And then VGI times this MG over MP would indeed give us VGI times mg over mp. Perhaps a little confusing when you say it out loud, but indeed this is the correct way to factor it. Since we have vgi multiplied by this large term, we can undo that, so to speak, by dividing both sides of the equation by that term. And sort of neatly, we have the velocity of the girl relative to the ice in this form here. All we have to do now is plug in the mass of the girl and the mass of the plank, and we have our answer to part a. And when you compute that, you should get 1.15 meters per second. So again, that's the velocity of the girl relative to the ice. Now on to part B, which asks for the velocity of the plank relative to the surface of the ice. In symbolic form, that is just asking for V sub pi. Well, since we know V sub gi, we can substitute that into this equation here and then quite easily solve for V sub pi. And then, of course, we'll subtract 1.5 from both sides of the equation. And we get negative 0.345 meters per second for the velocity of the plank relative to the surface of the ice. Notice that the negative sign indicates that the plank is sliding to the left as the girl is moving to the right. Recall that her velocity relative to the ice was a positive value. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you like to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.